Good evening and welcome to this webinar tonight on how to earn $20,000 to $100,000 as a rental leasing agent. My name is Andre Hill and I'm a leasing agent with Realty One Group XL and I've been doing leasing well over six years. I'm also a certified housing inspector. I've been doing Section 8 inspections for well over eight years. I have inspected over 10,000 homes in my lifetime and counting. And one day I'm going to record or do a recording on how to pass your Section 8 inspection inspections for owners that's looking to get on a Section 8 voucher program in which I will explain more in detail during that particular webinar. So tonight we're going to jump right into it. How can you earn an extra $20,000 to $100,000 as a leasing agent? So what is a leasing agent? So with leasing agents work with property owners to find good tenants for their buildings. This could be single family homes, apartments, or businesses. So many ask, what is the difference between a leasing agent and real estate agent? Well, let's look at the difference. So leasing agents, they have short term relationships with tenants. Unlike the leasing agent, real estate agents, they have a long term relationship with tenants. Now the difference is the short term relationship is because leasing agents are dealing with people that's only looking to rent a house. Real estate agents, for the most part, they're dealing with people that's looking to buy a home and they're going to be in that home for 30 years or more. Leasing agent, you can only rent houses. Versus a real estate agent, you can rent houses and sell houses. Now, leasing agents, you typically, you get paid pretty quick as a leasing agent. So you normally get paid anywhere from 7 to 30 days after the tenant moves in. Now, the payment plan, for, well, as far as getting paid, as far as the real estate agent, it takes a little longer because it normally takes about three months to close, and you normally get paid soon as that particular buyer purchased their home and they move in and they cut you a check. So normally that process is about 90 days. Also, it's a long-term relationship because most people that's trying to buy a house, you're probably going to show them 10 to 15 houses before they decide if they want a home or not. So that's the difference between a leasing agent and real estate agent. A leasing agent rent houses, a real estate agent, they can rent houses and sell houses. So before you become a leasing agent, I always recommend people to do your homework. You want to make sure this is something that you want to do. So you want to research and understand leasing, number one. Number two, you want to find out, do your state offer a leasing license? Some states don't offer leasing license. They require that you become a broker so which is not bad because like I said before as a broker or as a real estate agent you get to rent and sell houses so that's the that's the beauty of that as well now understand this here the work can be tedious but rewarding so you're going to do some work it's not easy but you're going to do some work and I can promise you that once you see those commission checks that's coming in you'll be be very well pleased if you're a person like myself that's out there working hard so what are my recommendations? Since I've been doing this for a while, one of the first things I recommend is that you find a company that's looking for a leasing agent. Okay? So the advantage of this here, if you find a company that's looking for a leasing agent, they normally have law, uh, they normally have a large inventory of rental properties. So if they're looking for a leasing agent, sometimes you will find a company that has like over 200 properties. And they need someone to go out and rent those properties for them. Other than that, the owner's going to be calling, trying to find out why why they why their apartments or why their house is still unoccupied. So find a company that's looking for a leasing agent because this will make your life very very easy when it comes to renting houses. Now I'm gonna go over some of the real estate companies that I'm familiar with that I have worked with work with in the past that may be, be beneficial to you. Now let me let you also know that I'm in the Chicago area. I pretty much deal with the Chicago South suburbs. So I'm a, I'm literally about 25 minutes from Chicago. So most of my leasing is done in the um, South suburbs of Chicago. Of Chicago. Um, I do no leasing in Chicago and I'm going to explain to you why later on in this webinar. So of course one of the companies I'm familiar with is Realty One Group XL. Like I said, I've been with this company over six years. Another company I just love working for or working with is First Key Homes. They they have some gorgeous homes. Their homes are immaculate. 
Um, beautiful homes. So I love working with First Key Homes as well. Also, Invitation Homes. Invita invitation Homes, they are um, they have some real nice properties. And a lot of times, they're they always looking for leasing agents as well. So you probably want to look into Invitation Homes as well to see if they need any leasing agents. Um, Fairview Realty. Fairview Realty, I know them because I just do a lot of their Section 8 inspections. Um, they're, they're a good company. They got they pre they pretty much have an easy application process as well. So I like written for um real for um Fairview Realty as well. Keller Williams, they now I know for a fact they're always looking for leasing agents. I get tons of emails from them trying to recruit me to come work for them. But this is a company you probably want to look into to see if they need a leasing agent in your area. And I love private owners. Private owners, they, they don't believe in um, the MLS system, which I'm going to talk about later. They just want somebody that's going to rent their property for them as soon as possible. And I like working with private owners because I set my own commission with them and they pay me as well. All right. So let's talk about getting your license. So if you're not in the Chicago area, you want to look on, you want to Google um, real estate associations that's in your area to find out how you can get your real estate license. Now, for if you're in Chicago, you can go to Chicago Association of Realtors, which is ChicagoRealtor.com, or guess what? You can go to Groupon, and trust me, you'll find a lot of companies out there that's offering real estate training if you're looking to get your real estate license. Now, there's two ways you can get your license. One, you can go to the classroom, or two, you can do self-study. Let me, let's look at the, the difference between the two. Now, if you do the classroom, it's going to take two days for you to take the exam to get, and to get your license. If you do self-study, they're going to give you 90 days to get your license. Me, personally, I work full-time, so I did the self-study. And I'm going to get more into the self-study shortly. If you do the classroom... It's going to be $240 if you're in the Chicago area. If you do um, Chicago Association of Realtors, that's how much the class costs. If you do the self-study, it's $190. So you see it's about, what, $50 cheaper if you do the self-study. And if you do the self-study, they're going to send you the materials. They're going to mail it to you. And they're going to tell you everything you need to do in order to pass that state exam. So let's dig deep into the self-study because I did the self-study. So let's talk a little bit about the self-study. Okay. So I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of the self-study, what I had to go through, and hopefully this will be very informative for you. So number one, once you get your self-study material, they're going to send you a syllabus. With this syllabus here, it's going to tell you you got to study about eight chapters. They're going to give you this big old real estate book. But the syllabus is going to teach you or it's going to tell you which chapters you need to be studying and at the end of each chapter you're going to take an open book test and i'm gonna let you know the test um has the answer well the book has the answers in the back of the book you can look in the back of the book um to get the answers but what i did um i didn't look in the back of the book until i actually finished answering the questions after each chapter and then i went to the back of the book to make sure that my answers was were you know make sure my answers were correct so at the end, at the end of each chapter, you got to mail it in or uh, email it to to your whoever your teacher is. So you email your test to your instructor, and your instructor will grade it, which you should pass because, like I said, it's an open book test. And they're going to send you back your results, and then you're going to move on to the next chapter. And it'll only take them about forty eight hours to get back with you uh, once you send in your test in by email. Real easy, real easy. That part is. So after you're done taking your test and going through your syllabus, you're going to be ready to take the pre-exam for the state. So what I did, I found a proctor. Now, a proctor is a person that initiate your test for you. So if you find you a proctor, I found one at the local library. So what the Chicago Association of Realtors did, they made them sign an agreement, pretty much saying they're not going to help you cheat. They send the test over to the library, and you set up a day with your the instructor at the library when you're going to take your exam. And this remind you, this exam is to prepare you 
for the state exam. So it's going to be, a, you're going to get a pretest. It's going to be closed book, and it's going to be about 100 questions. Now, I'm going to let you know that the test was easy. Everything you learned in those eight chapters on your syllabus is going to be on that 100 question test. So you can miss 20 questions and pass. So you need about an 80% pass rate. So you can miss 20 questions out of those 100 questions they ask you. Like I said, it's a closed book. They give you about an hour and a half, I believe, to take that exam. It literally took me about 20, 25 minutes to take that exam to, to qualify for the state exam. All right. So number six, after you pass the, the pre-test, now you're ready for the state exam. Now, I had, I did my state exam at h and Block. Now, it's funny that h and Block, I didn't know you got paramedics in there taking an exam. You got real estate agents in there taking an exams. So I did my testing at h and Block. So they have a testing center. You got to go in there pretty much empty-handed. Um, you can't take no paper, no cell phones, no nothing. They got cameras everywhere. But I went to h and Block to do my state exam where I didn't have to go downtown Chicago. Now the exam was $46. Um, it's 55 questions. As soon as you pass the exam, they're going to give you test results immediately. So you get your test results as soon as you stand up, walk back to the front. It's going to take them literally less than five minutes to give you your state exam. So once you take that state exam, you got to pay $75 for that to get your license. Now, I must warn you, everything you study, throw it out the window. <laughs> I sat down, and when I seen that exam, and I thought I was going to breeze through it, the entire state exam is scenario-based. So it gives you, it puts you in situations, and you got to answer the questions based on the questions, you know, based on the scenario. So they're going to put you in a scenario situation, and you got to be able to answer those questions. So everything you study and those 100 questions and the, the, the um, questions that was in the back of your book, none of those questions were, were on that exam, on a state exam. But thank God I passed it on the first go around. And I just say, just take your time, um, do a process of, of, of elimination, and then you will be fine. So like I said, it's 55 questions. I paid about $46 for the state exam. Once you pass that state exam, you just got to pay $75 for your license. So, once you walk out of there and you have passed, now you can get a realtor sponsored car for 45 days. So, you remember those companies I told you that you want to make sure and see if they're hiring? Well, guess what? If you, if you, one of those companies had decided to hire you, you can go back to them and they can give you a realtor sponsored car. Now, what this do is let you work 45 days without your license. So it's a temporary permit to practice until your permanent pocket card is received. So now you can start practicing your real estate with the with the sponsorship card and for 45 days. So that's the good thing. So now you can get to work immediately. While you're waiting on your license, you can pay your $75, so you're good to go. So that is the beauty of this here. Once you pass your state exam, you're ready to go rock and roll and go do some work. Now, you have to decide. And make a decision. Do you want to be a W-2 employee? Or do you want to be a 1099 boss and be independent? So let's look at the pros and the cons of this here. And you have to decide tonight. Whether you want to be a W-2 employee or a 1099 boss. So the pros of a W-2 employee, salary, and you get guaranteed income. So if you're going to be on the clock, you're going to be working probably about... 50 plus hours a week. So that's the pro. Another pro, you may be lucky enough to find a job that's going to give you dental and medical benefits. Another pro, pay vacation and sick time. So as a W-2 employee, those are some of the pros. And last but not least, you might get a percentage of the money for each unit that you rent. So some, some companies, they give you a percentage um, they get your percentage depending on the properties that you rent. So they may say, if you rent this two bedroom apartment that we have, we charging a thousand dollars a month for. Well, you rent that out, we're going to give you probably twenty percent of that hundred dollars, of that nine hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. So you may get a percentage. Now this is not guaranteed, but you may get a percentage of each unit that you rent out, just to let you know. 
The pros of being a 1099 employee. You're your own boss. You create your own hours. You work for yourself. Also, you get tax break, breaks and over, five, over 400 tax deductions. And the income is unlimited. So one thing about working independent, you can, you can lease and rent houses for anybody. The sky is the limit. It's all up to you. Let's look at some of the cons. The cons of a W-2 employee, your income is limited. So let me let you understand this here. As a W-2 employee, employee, excuse me, if you're working for a company, you can, nine times out of 10, you can only lease for that company. Like for instance, here in the state of Illinois, if I'm working for a company and, I'm, and, I, and if I'm not an independent contractor, I can only work for that company, so my income is limited. Also, no tax breaks. As a regular W-2 employee, they cut out a lot of benefits. You only get about 15 tax deductions. Also, you're trading time for money. So those weekends and holidays that you, you want off, nine times out of 10, as a W-2 employee, you will not get those days off. And also, you, a lot of times you have to meet quotas, and most times you got to make sure that the building that you're renting keeps an 85% occupancy rate. So guess what? If you that 85% occupancy rate is not up, if that those if that building is empty, you're not producing, well, nine times out of ten, they're gonna get rid of you and find somebody to take your place. Just keep that in mind. So the the the, the cons of being a 1099 employee is it's all commission based. So you gotta make sure that you out there working hard, making sure that you're getting leads, and I'm gonna talk about that later, how you can get your leads. But it's commission based. So, like I said, most times you get paid 7, 14, or 30 days after the tenant has moved in. Remember that. So, you won't get no dental or medical benefits. You have probably have to go out there and search for your own dental and medical benefits just to let you know. And also, no paid vacation or sick time. So, uh, remember that. So, when you call, so if you don't go to work, heck, you don't get paid. So, no paid vacations or sick time. So these are the decisions you have to make. Do you want to be a W-2 employee or do you want to be a 1099 boss? Me personally, I do the 1099, I do the boss. I like to be independent. I like to work around my own time. And it's a beautiful thing. Also, let's look at ways to get paid. So you want to know how you can get paid. So you're probably saying, Andre, now how in the world do I get paid? I didn't got my license. I'm working for a company now. I'm a 1099 employee. Or, I'm a W-2 employee, how do I get paid? So, we're going to look at some ways you can get paid. So, we're going to look at the first illustration up top. So, we're going to say for the illustration up top, you're getting first month's rent. And we're going to say that the rent is $2,500 and you rented two apartments in this building. So, you rented two apartments in this building. It's $2,500 times two. It's $5,000. So you rented out two units at $2,500 a piece. That's $5,000. So we're going to go down to the second picture, the second illustration. And we're going to say for this particular property, they're offering half a first month's rent of $2,500. So you rented two of these apartments at $1,250. That's $2,500 for the two properties you rented at half of the first month's rent. All right. Follow me now. So we're going to say you the, the, the third illustration at the very bottom on the left. We're going to say that the owner said they're going to pay you a $1,000 flat rate. That's the only thing they're going to pay you. You rent this out, I'm going to give you $1,000 for renting out these two units. So guess what? You rented out those two units for $2,000. So as we go back up to the first illustration, let's do the math. You made $2,500 times two. It was $2,500 times times two. You made $5,000 because you got the first month's rent. Illustration number two. You rented out two units at $1,250 for $2,500 because they paid you half of the first month's rent of $2,500. And at the very bottom, you rented out two units at a flat rate of $1,000, which gave you $2,000. So just for renting six units for that month, you made $9,500 for the first month, which is good. That's great. That's great income. 
Now, I remind you, the income is going to vary depending on where you're doing your rentals at. If you're in downtown Chicago, you're going to get paid nine times out of ten more money. If you probably go further south or further west, you probably don't get that get that amount. But you can make nine thousand five hundred dollars a month depending where you're renting at. So, like I said, for the month you made a total of nine thousand five hundred dollars for one month. So I minus ten percent out of that nine thousand five hundred dollars a month. So you're saying, Andre, you just took ten percent. Why did you take ten percent of my money? Well, you remember you had that sponsorship license we talked about? Well, guess what? Your managing broker that holds your license, they got to be paid, get paid too. So nine times out of 10, they're going to charge you $10,000. I mean, I'm sorry, they're going to charge you 10% just for holding your license. So if you take 10% from that $9,500, that still leaves you with $8,550 because you paid a sponsorship fees. Now, let me let you know, the sponsorship fee may vary from different companies. The company I'm with, they get 10% of what I make, okay? So I know companies that charge their people 15%, 20%. I like the 10% personally. Thank God my company loves me. Not saying that the other companies don't love their employees, but I'd rather pay the 10% than 15% any day of the week. Also, let's look at how you can make money while you sleep, okay? So they have this site called MRED, or what we like to call the MLS. So, and the MLS costs $95 a month. In Illinois, you are required to have, to have the MLS. So you are required to pay $95 a month for the MLS access. If you don't have the access to the MLS, um, they give you, I think they give you about 30 to 60 days to pay it or they suspend your license. So you pay $95 a month for the MLS, which I barely use and I'm going to tell you why later. Um, but I do pay my $95 to keep my license active. But the MLS give you access to tons of properties. Oh, it's well over 10,000 properties in the MLS. It, it's, it's just it's just huge. Let me just say that. So how can you make money while you sleep? Well, let's talk about the MLS. So what is the MLS? It's the Multiple Listing Services. So, so like I said, it could be about 10,000 properties located in the MLS. Okay? So how are you going to make money while you sleep? So we're going to take a look at it. So th this is the actual MLS sheet. I blotted out some of the stuff for personal, because uh, it's personal information in there. But this is how MLS sheet looks. So we're going to say one day that you decided that you want to go to vac on vacation with your family. And you listed this beautiful home right here, this four bedroom, two bath, and you're getting ready to go on vacation with your family. Now you listed this here. You're going to, you're going to Disney World with your family. You can't show the house. So what you have decided to do is list this property for $1,400 a month. And you're going to say, well, if somebody showed this property for me that I listed it in MLS, I'm going to give them half of the commission. So half of the commission is what? $700. So while I'm going to Disney World with my family, I have listed this property on MLS, and that gives other brokers access to show this house. So while I'm gone on vacation, they're showing this house, and guess what? Someone may have rented it while I was gone. So guess what? They made $700, and guess what? I made $700, and I didn't even have to show the place. Now, if I've listed this property on the MLS and I end up renting it myself, then I get the full $1,400. But I'm offering people money. If you go out and list this property for me, I'm going to give you half the commission. Or they may, or you may decide you want to give them $500 of the commission. It's your choice. You can set it the way you want to set it. And the thing about the MLS, the more owners you come into contact with, the more properties you can list on the MLS and go about your business, have other agents show it, and you come up with the commission that you're going to pay them for renting out this house. So that's how you can make money while you're sleeping. So let's talk about marketing. Let's talk about the marketing aspect of it. How can you market um, your properties? Or how can you market and get tenants? So one of the ways you can market is the best one of all is word of mouth. You will be surprised at how many people are looking for houses. I think I read years ago that over 20 million people a year are looking for houses to rent. And don't forget the millennials don't ain't looking to buy houses right now. They like their freedom. They want to travel. They want to get out. They want to go. So word of mouth is always good. 
Number two, this was a big one I used to use when I first started, Craigslist. I heard Craigslist charge $5 now for listings. I don't know because I haven't been on, in a, on there in a while, but I heard they charge $5 now. So Craigslist is a good resource. Facebook Marketplace. I, when I list properties on Facebook Marketplace, oh my God, I get so many inboxes. But the good thing about Facebook Marketplace, um, you get to actually see how people carry carrying themselves. So um, Facebook Marketplace is a good way to advertise yourself as well. And we just talked about the MLS, the multiple listing service. You can use that. Also, go Section 8. And like I said, I'm going to end up coming back doing a video on video on how to pass your Section 8 inspection. So go Section 8 is a good place to list your properties if you're looking for Section 8 voucher holders. Typically, the government pays 70% of the rent and the tenant will pay 30% of the rent. So it's like a 70-30 with go Section 8. So like I said, Section 8 pays 70%. And the tenant only pays 30% of the rent. And a lot of owners like Section 8 as well. Also, you can go on Truya to list properties. You can go on to Zillow. So these are sites that I have used to list properties. Um, I could tell you one thing. I get tons of emails, text messages, phone calls every day of people looking for houses, which is a beautiful thing. And also... I don't want to forget this here. You, you can also look in the newspaper. You can also list your properties, I'm sorry, in the newspaper. All right. How to qualify your tenants for leasing. So one of the first thing, I'm going to give you some tips. Always do showings close to home. Do not drive all over the, the state of Illinois, Kentucky, Alabama, Georgia, wherever you at, trying to show houses. Stay close to your area because people have you running all over looking for houses. And they, and they ain't even they don't even qualify for a house. So that's why we, you want to make sure that you qualify your tenant before you show them houses. So always do your showings close to home. Number two, schedule around your time. Don't forget you the, you the boss. Schedule around your time. Don't find yourself running from house to house every time somebody call you. For instance, I literally get over 25 calls a day for one house. Now just imagine. Every time somebody call and want to see this house, I'm running back and forth to show this house for 25 people. So schedule around your time. So don't find yourself running from house to house every time somebody call because it's a waste of your time. It could be a waste of gas. So you got to look at that. You got to be, you got to have a system. And I'm trying to show you the system right now. So schedule around your time. I do group showings. What, what do I mean by group showings? For instance, during this time of year, it gets dark quick. So I do most of my showings on Saturday mornings because most people are available Saturdays and Sundays. So, for instance, I say, well, I'm showing 22406 Brookwood Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. So I'm calling everybody that called for this particular house, letting them know, look, I'm showing this house Saturday at 10 o'clock. So they have a time frame. So that's a group showing. So that they know that if they want to see this house that Saturday morning, they have to be at that house during that time frame. Not only that, it's kind of safety as well, because if somebody's going to do something to you, which I have never had this experience, nine times out of ten, they're not going to try to do nothing to you with multiple people around. So that's just for safety. Like I said, I never had no issue with fire safety. All my showings have gone well, thank God, over the six years I have been doing this. So do group showings. Also, never wear expensive clothes or jewelry. When I go out, my wife will tell you, I probably got some sweats on, a hoodie, maybe some jeans and gym shoes. I don't wear no jewelry. Only thing, only jewelry I have on is my wedding ring. So other than that, you just want to be casual. And most people can relate to you when you're casual anyway. So just go casual. Don't go suited and booted with ties and stuff like that. You know, because if you're a good salesperson, you're going to get the ring on anyway. Number five, never show houses at night. I don't never show houses at night. Don't never ever show houses at night unless you just had to. But if you're showing houses at night because um, you got things to do and you can't show the house, make sure you take somebody with you, okay? Number six, understand leasing is a numbers game. The more people you show, the greater your chance is of renting the property. For example, I literally go through 30 people, 30, um, 30 contacts. I go through 30 contacts. Once I start qualifying them, my list will dwindle down to maybe eight people that qualify. 
out of, out of those eight people that say they're going to show up, maybe three are actually show up the day that I show the house. So I understand it's a numbers game. So the more people you show, the greater chances that you have of renting a house. So realize that it's a numbers game. So don't get up discouraged at 30 people that called you. You didn't call them and only three people show up because it's a numbers game. All right. Number seven, do, don't get caught up in your emotions. This is a business. Don't get all upset because don't, uh, no, don't nobody want the house that you showed them. Don't get all in your feelings because you feel they should take the house and they don't want it. It's a business. Get your feelings out, get your emotions out, and people are going to come to you also with a lot of sad stories. They going through this, they going through that. Can you work with me on this here? Can you work with, with me on that there? No, this is a business, ladies and gentlemen. Treat it like a business. Don't get caught up in your emotions. Number eight, don't talk yourself out of a rental. What I mean by that, you may show a house that you think is ugly. You may say, I would never, ever move to this place. Well, guess what? You may not, not like it, but somebody else may like it. So don't talk yourself out of a sale or a rental. So I have been, I can't tell you how many times I done went to a house and I'm saying to my, in my head, man, this is an ugly house. And then a person to say, oh, I love this house. Let me put in for it. So what you like, somebody else may don't like. And what you don't like, somebody else may like, just to let you know. All right. So we're still talking about how to qualify tenants for leasing. But I just want to give you those side notes that you should know about. Okay. As we move on to number nine, respond, respond, respond back to all calls and texts within 24 hours. Make sure you, you respond back to people within 24 hours. Number 10, make sure your tenant makes three times the monthly rent. So if somebody called you and said they're looking for a house, they're looking to pay $2,000 a month in rent. Well, guess what? They should be making at least $6,000 a month as far as their income. So make sure they make three times the monthly rent. Also, find out their credit score. Now, our company, we require 550 credit score and above. So you want to make sure that you find out their credit score before you show the house. So guess what? Let them answer the questions for you. So I ask the questions and I let them answer it. I don't tell them what I'm looking for. I want them to tell me what they got because people just want to go see houses just for the heck of it. Every now and then you want somebody to just want you to show houses. They don't qualify for the house, but they want you to show the house. Don't waste your time showing houses that people don't qualify for. I had a lady that about a couple of weeks ago, she didn't even qualify for the house, but she's like, well, can you show me anyway? Um, no, I'm a busy man. I work full time. I do leasing part time. And I got a family. I just don't go out showing houses just because people want to go see houses. Your time is valuable. Understand that. Also, you want to find out if they have any evictions. Now, our company, anybody that has an eviction two or more years, of course, we'll rent to them. Now, if it's a recent eviction, no, we're not going to rent to them. So just to let you know, but you got to find out what your company requires. We require that your eviction is two years or more. And let me say this here also, Illinois, if you're in Illinois, they just passed a law called just housing. So the just housing law, meaning you can't, that means you can't discriminate against nobody that has a felon, just to let you know. So they do have a law in Illinois called just housing, just um, kicked in January 1st. So you can't discriminate anybody that has um, a, a background, uh, uh, felony or anything like that. So, and I should have added that to the slide here, but it, it popped up in my head as I was talking. Also, you want to find out, do they have a bankruptcy? So these are questions that you're asking people on the phone. You're asking how much they make monthly. What's their credit score? Do you have any evictions? Do they have any recent bankruptcies? If they have any open bankruptcies, guess what? Nine times out of ten, we're not going to rent to them because they got an open bankruptcy. If it's two or more years of being discharged, then, of course, we'll rent to them. So these are the questions that you're asking people over the phone before you even show them the house. And these, I ask people these questions, and when they say no to all of them, and I find out that they make the income, that's when I set up the time with them to show the house. Because you don't want to waste your time. Your time is valuable. I can't stress it enough. People will waste your time. Number 14, what I do, I send them a reminder the night before they're showing. So if I know I'm showing the house Saturday, I'm texting them Friday, Letting them re and, remind and reminding them that they, ha that they have a showing Saturday morning. Not only that, Saturday morning, I send them another reminder about their showing. Now, 
one thing I do do is I don't leave my house until they confirm that they're coming. Once again, do not leave your house until you know for a fact that they are coming to the showing. And always, number 16, always show the person who's looking to rent the house. What I mean by that, you have people call you and say, um, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in that house on Hickory Drive, but I'm going to send my mom to look at it for me. No, sir. I don't show them. I don't show their mom the house, their cousin the house. I let them come personally to see the house for themselves because I got to make sure this is a the house they want. But not only that, what's going to happen, and it has happened plenty of times when I first started, I show one of their relatives the house. Guess what? The tenant's going to call you back two days later and say, well, I need to see the house. Now you got to go back to that house and show that house again, and that's a waste of time. So only show the house to the person that's looking to rent the house. In number 17, wait no more than 15 minutes for people who have scheduled a showing. So I'm all about timing. If you can't be on time for your appointments, nine times out of 10, you ain't going to be on time paying your rent. Now, that's one thing. They may call and say, Andre, I'm running a little late. I respect a person like that. But if you didn't text them the night before in that morning, and they still late, then that's a person you don't want to rent to. And number 18, never reschedule with a person who stands you up. If a person stands you up, never, ever show them a house. I don't. You can, but I don't. Me personally. I can't tell you how many times I didn't went to a house. They had a 10 o'clock appointment. And they call you at 12, 12, 30, talking about they forgot or they just woke up. Can they reschedule? Absolutely not. Because they didn't have enough consideration to call you and let you know that, that they were running late. So never reschedule with a person that stands you up. And also, once you just show the house and you find out they got a good credit score, no evictions and bankruptcy, you're ready to start the application process. Most applications are like $45. It depends on what company you are. I'll send them the link to go online. Um, I had them send me their last two check stubs, their photo ID, and we get the process started. We call their job to make sure that they've been working their job, that they claim they work, they working at. Um, we verify with their owners, their current owner, to make sure they were a good tenant as well. And then we let the process takes, take place. So that's the good thing. And then last but not least, just throw a little bonus here. So they have what they call a forewarn app. Now, you have to check with your um, real estate company that your license is with and see do they offer the free forewarn app. Now, the good thing about the forewarn app, you can look up people to check out their background um, to make sure that you're, you're not in no type of danger when you're showing houses. So it's an easy app. You'll put their phone number in, and this app will let you know their history, where they live at, um, if they have any bankruptcies, anything like that. So check with your real estate company and see if you get this app for free. My company with Realty One Group XL, we get this um, app free of charge. And then IDFPR. So in your lifetime, you're going to begin to run into tenants that were scammed by so-called real estate agents and leasing agents. Or they didn't get with a company that took their security deposit. So what I normally do is recommend those tenants to IDFPR, which is the Illinois Department of Financial and Professional Regu Regulation. They can go on this site to file a complaint. If somebody stole their security deposit free of charge, the state hires them a lawyer that investigate their claims. So it protects the tenant as well. And you can find out if people are bogus real estate agents. Well, I can say bogus. You can find out if people are actually licensed as real estate agents. Matter of fact, you, you can go on this website to find out if your doctor is licensed. You can go on this website to find out if your daycare person, your daycare provider is licensed. You can go on this site to file complaints if you feel that uh, you've been discriminated against or your tenants been discriminated against. So understand that there, that as a leasing agent, you are, you represent your tenant. You are like a lawyer. You know the laws of the land and your job is to protect your client, which is the tenant once you start finding them homes and stuff like that. So I hope this was helpful for you. Um, thank you for tuning in to how you can earn an extra $20,000 to $100,000 as a licensed leasing agent. I appreciate you all. Thank you. Be blessed and have a good night. And please comment, leave a comment and let me know what you thought about this video. I hope it was, it was very informative. Have a great night. Be blessed.